It's Steve Downs. No hugs. Sorry. Manly hands. You know, Chief doesn't hug. Manly hands. That's actually one of the guidance lines in. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, it's funny that I know this, but one of the guidance lines for anyone who's officially cosplaying as the Chief cannot hug anyone. Period. Uh, uh, it's physically it's, impossible. That's it, it is physically impossible. Yeah. And firm handshakes um, all around. Perfect. So great to see you guys again. See you. This is uh, this is exciting. Because are there any Friday pass holders in the audience? Quite a few. Uh, the Chief Cortana panel, the name of which, by the way, is there's two of us in here now. Uh, is a Friday only panel. So you guys did very well here in Philly. Uh, so I was talking to Stephen Jen earlier. Uh, you know, we're doing a panel in East City. And for, uh, so each panel is going to be very different, right? This panel is not streamed. This is a Philly exclusive panel. The only way to see it is right here on Friday. So I want to kick things off the way, the only way I know how. Have you guys had your cheese sticks yet? <laughs> uh, that's in my contract. Here. <laughs> should be. That was a condition of me coming to this one, is cheesesteaks for the kid. Yeah. So, have you had it yet? I have not had it yet. Okay. I'm uh, eagerly interested. Tonight the night? Huh? Tonight's the night? Yes. Tonight is the night. You went live yesterday, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I had a lot of cheesesteak yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, had I, a, I had a pork Italian, and then a full cheesesteak, and then a half a cheesesteak. Good. And I feel like I ate all of that. You now, I wonder if... You ate the entire city. Yeah, I tried. So I'm from Chicago, and Chicago's known for pizza, but like any, you know, there's good Chicago pizza, and there's lousy Chicago pizza. So I need to be steered to the good Philly cheese steak. Yeah, well, let me ask, uh, how many Jim's fans? It was one Jim's fan. <laughs> yes. Uh, Geno's? Is that a no? Yeah. A, a one Geno fan? Oh, oh there was somebody shaking their Gino. head. Oh, no, oh, no, look, there's okay. more. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll go a little bit more non-traditional. Steve's? Yeah! I love that it's all like right. Jim's name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Pat, Jim, Steve, Jim, Jim. Um, okay. I, I'm well, gluten and dairy free, so I don't get to have a cheesesteak. There's some, there's some kind of meatless wonder that they have. Wonder. Meatless surprise? Yeah, I can eat meat. It's just dairy and gluten. Okay, never mind. Gross. Sorry. We're cares. Yeah. We don't care. It's not happening. Sadly. Okay, let's get into it. Um, we're going to talk about all the things uh, that we didn't get to talk to and talk about in Orlando. Um, first thing, before we get into characters though, we'd love to talk about uh, VO and the work you guys do. What do you think is the biggest misconception about uh, the voiceover industry? What is the biggest misconception about the voiceover industry? Uh, I, I had two thoughts that jumped in my head. It's, the, the one misconception is that it's easy, and the other misconception is that it's hard. Both are true. <laughs> That's interesting. That yeah. is, yeah. Both are true. Uh, I think it, 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 it requires... It requires sort of different... Uh, a different skill set. And, you know, once you sort of lock in to, to the character, whatever that character may be, and, and you really have it down, it's easy. The hard part is sort of getting it. That's very true. I once had a, <laughs> when I first started doing voiceover, I was dating a guy who was like, that's easy, I can totally do that. Oh gosh. I don't, that's super easy. And I was like, oh great, well, I'll give you my agent's number and yeah. you should make that happen. Um, what do I, I think, misconception, I think what's interesting about voiceover is that a lot, there aren't as many good directors in voiceover. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's a misconception. Uh, this is just a observation. Thing, an observation um, that I have been lucky to work with some remarkable directors, and then I've also worked with people less in video games, not so much in video games, but in other uh, forms of voiceover that have never directed anybody before and don't know what they're doing and rely on you, basically, to direct yourself, which is what you do at a certain point as you get, as you've done it long enough. Well, do you remember your very first VO games and what form they took? 
like a very first video gig. Yeah. I think mine was a commercial for Nordstrom's. <laughs> and I said, these calves, soft as butter. <laughs> You know, first of all, it's kind of like... You wow. were playing the happiest camper? or you No, no, sleep? I just oh, was oh. because I got the gig because oh. somebody liked me, you know. I mean, wow, they liked me, you know. I mean, just because you go through the lead up to that and, and you know, after that, you get 99 rejections to one. Yes, to one that is true. Uh, so, you know, that's your job. One, one guy... Uh, very successful voice of the talent said, you know, you wake up every day having been fired from the job you did yesterday. If you had a job yesterday, that job is over and now you're unemployed again. So it's kind of like, you know, you're always looking for, for another Yeah, job. maybe that's a misconception is that once yeah. you've made it in voiceover, mm -hmm. you've made it. I get rejected constantly, you guys, <laughs> all the time for voiceovers, all the time. Because we're constantly auditioning for commercials and whatever, and I get it's just part of the job. After after you had gotten a little bit of work, was it something you knew you wanted to pursue right away, um, or Jen, did you think maybe that you'd want to stick to really stick to traditional acting, Steve radio? Was it something that you kind of fell in love with right away? I don't. I mean, it's it's just a different form of acting. Even selling a taco, you know, it's just kind of a different form of of acting, I mean, and it's, it was, at first I thought, because I'm a, I'm a trained theater actor, and at first I, that sounds so stupid, doesn't it? I'm a trained theater actor, it's not how I meant to. Um, but I am a trained theater actor, guys. No, I, uh, I thought, oh, this is something I can do to feed my theater habit, and then it became something else, and it's on the court, and I love it, and it just seems like part and parcel to me, you know, it's all the same, different. I think I fell in love with it, uh, and I came from a radio background. I was a disc jockey. I mean, that, that was my five-day week red butter gig, and I was a disc jockey because I loved rock and roll. That's what drew me to the business, not necessarily to be on the radio, uh, but, but because I could stay close to the music. But once I started doing voiceover, it was just, wow. Did you start as a groupie? Voiceover group? No. Oh, a, uh, a as a music, radio? Yeah, a music group oh, before you got the radio. Group. I mean, were, you, uh, were you following bands around I, and then you're like, oh, wait, I should just be a radio DJ and then I can interview them? I never had body parts signed, but that's what you mean. That's where we're going. I I was, that wasn't where I was going, but. <laughs> no, I would, uh, I guess I was. I mean, I, I just loved. I, I mean, I wanted to be a, a rock and roll star. That, that seemed like a really cool uh, occupation. It's also highly unrealistic. <laughs> and, uh, so you I, went for the, the Master Chief instead? Yeah, I, went, I settled for Master Chief. <laughs> but, but it was, uh, you know, yeah, I wanted to be uh, a rock star. That was a good thing. And, you know, when it got, you know, so I was in bands and stuff. We were in college. What did you play? I, I started with guitar and then I switched to drums. Yeah. And, uh, and then it got to the point where I was either going to drop out of school and take it seriously or do the smart thing and keep it as a hobby. And that's what led me into radio. That seemed like a viable alternative. And then radio led me into voice. Do you still play the drums? I'm here. I'm here. I'm not too. Go ahead. Do you still I play still, the drums? I do still play the drums. Uh, uh, it's a great energy release. Yeah. The neighbors are looking okay about Right. That. I want to shift gears to, to, into Halo, uh, talking about characters, but I'm going to start with a tough one that I didn't ask in the last panel. Um, if you had to put it into words, what does being a part of this franchise and a part of Halo mean to you? It's um, a gift every single day because we get to be a part of this awesome story, and that's that's mainly where we're coming from because. Because we are nerds and we don't play because we're lame. We're lame. We and we can't play. Um, but we can watch people play who are good and enjoy it. And uh, the story is what is, I think, really hooks me into it. And it's an honor to be a part of something that is so 
rich. I think it's the dream of any actor to be a part of something that is, I mean, the books and everything, I mean, everything, this, this world is so well built and so flushed out and that, I, I can't say that enough. It's yeah. an honor to be, and it's also an honor to be a part of the community. We had a signing earlier, and people came up to us and told us that it was an honor to meet us. It's an honor for us to be here and to meet you and to feel accepted in this. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I, I don't have much to add to that, uh, other than that uh, it, it is, uh, uh, you know, like Jen said, it's such a, it's, it's such a gift. And, and what pulled me into it initially was the, the story of Halo, and it was right up my alley. I'm a big science fiction nerd, and I just love that part of it. And then to be able to play, you know, uh, the man, a, you know, a superhero. You know, I when I was growing up, the superheroes were Superman. Batman, Spider-Man, and you know, what what young boy didn't fantasize? That's still the case today. That still is the case. And now and now to be able to do that with uh, with this character, it's just you know, it's just a gift. It just keeps on giving. I always wanted to be a computer. <laughs> True story. Yeah, I think. I think for me too. The, the years I got to spend working on Halo, there was a, there was a certain um, you know, it, it's kind of joy, but also this responsibility that comes with this franchise that's so worthy of promotion. Uh, so events like this that all of you are here at today, um, they're really, really special. Um, was there a point, uh, from a character perspective, we've talked before about when you guys realized the franchise was kind of hitting, like, oh boy, this is something real big. From a character perspective, is there a time when you realize, oh, this is not a job, but these are characters that I'm probably going to be spending many years with? Or does that kind of just go game to game? You see, you see where it's going. We feel I, well. I don't want to speak for you. I uh, feel lucky game to game. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> we don't you're know. You're going to use that. me again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we get to come back. Yay! Well, if we went through that period uh, between three and four, where the entire organization changed, sure, mm -hmm. almost you know completely, and you know we had no idea whether we were going to be part of that future or not, and when it became that. Oh. Like, boy, we get to jump back in the sandbox, you know, yeah. and, and, and continue this. Interest. And that's when we met, too. Yes. Right before that. Yeah, Jen and I had never met up until uh, shortly before we played Halo 4. So it was, uh, you know, that, that just brought this whole thing to another level. Uh, your ability, both of you, to transition into my next question without me asking it, <laughs> city after city, is uncanny. Uh, I think a lot of people heard the story about how it wasn't until Halo 4 that you met, but I wanted to dig in this panel into, uh, obviously, recording together. We talked about in, uh, during Halo 4 was something special because you have the opportunity to be next to each other, but also, how has the relationship, as you think about it, between Chief Morchana and those characters changed now that you even sometimes record separately together? Uh, what was it? What was it like? Now that you kind of have that, and you have also the relationship you've established over the years since meeting, because of the many shows together, is it quite different now recording because you kind of know the character uh, uh, even more? If you yeah, I mean, I think so. One, because we know each other and like each other, and and two, because we every time we do a game, we get to know the character better, right? I mean, yes, yeah, absolutely. Just more information to squirrel away. Um, so both of those. But yeah, I know. I mean, I feel like I'll read a line and I'll think, oh, I know how Steve is going to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay, I know what he's going to do there. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer these, offer yeah. these tidbits as fodder for him. You know. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was wondering. Yes. If, if you have it. Yeah. Yeah. Of well, I, you know, when I when I read. Or because it, it, you know, for Halo 5, for example, we did not record together. But when I'm recording, I think of Cortana as Jen. I'm talking to Jen, you know, and, and uh, I mean, you know, it's easier, first of all, because she's a real person. I really know her. You know, we become very good friends, and, and uh, you know, that's who Cortana is to me. So, you know, it, it's, it's, I, I like that. I got your back, Steve. Yeah. 
Yes, she does. She does her best. <laughs> For Jen, I'm going to make this question long so you can have a nice, comfortable seat for that rushed one. Um, in playing two characters, Halsey and Cortana, uh, what's it like in, 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 a, in a single franchise to kind of have two separate characters that you have that have, you can say, a similar foundation with very different applications? Um, what's it like kind of going between them? Presumably in the same sessions at times. They're two completely different people to me. I have to think of them that way. They want different things. They're doing. Different. I just have to think of them as completely different characters. I and I there's some stuff I do technically to switch, but I don't want them to sound. We talk a lot about it in forming these characters. I don't want them to sound that different because Cortana is of Halsey clearly, um, but I. They're completely different to me. I have to address them. I have to imagine them as totally different. So it's it's getting easier the more um, the better I know them. Okay. So. What are some of the technical differences that, that us uh, non voice actors appreciate that you can kind of have to it's hard for me to It's hard for me to describe. But um, Halsey's in a very a, a different. She's got a different, completely different tone. Oh, She's in a different register. She is an older woman, and so I'm calling on a little gravel. There's other things I do that it's hard for me to explain technically. Um, she does not, I try, and I try to not let her speak in contractions. I don't think she speaks in contractions, which makes her sound a little heightened and a little weird. Totally, yeah. But awesome at the same time. Um, but it's all, that's not always my, you know, I get I, read, I get the script and I read the script and I do what they tell me to do, so. Are there ever contractions in the script? Sometimes. Sometimes. Do you I, break them? I can't talk about this stuff right now. <laughs> I have corrected them, yes. Okay, okay. I have corrected them. I just want to make sure. You know, I mean, if I can just get objective for a minute, I, I think just from, from the story aspect. I think Halsey is the most interesting character in yeah. the entire yeah, she is. Halo camp. Thank you. She is the, she is Adam, the unifying you. force of the whole story. But, you know, without Halsey, there is no Master Chief. There is no Cortana. She is, she is, I think, well, she's very definitely part of Cortana. And, and, and she is, Part of her is in Master Chief, and I find her to be the most interesting character from the entire campaign. Yeah, she's doing really intense, awful things for the good of mankind, basically. Steve, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I don't think I've ever actually been able to hear from you your thoughts on, uh, there's so much to say, about Chief's evolution and how that character has changed, and I guess from your perspective, kind of the biggest changes that, 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 that you well, I think he's uh, uh, his his character has, with each game, has become more fleshed out. Um, you know, the biggest jump being in, in Halo Four. You know, when when this whole which is part of the reason why Jen and I uh, ended up working together was because there was there needed to be a connection between the two that we had not seen. Uh, and you know, you all know the Halo 4 and how, how it ended up. And it was very important that that, that he find his emotional sentiment that I don't think he really did ever find. But what's interesting to watch with him, especially in 4, maybe a little bit in 5, is his struggle to find it. And so he never really gets there, but, uh, but he, uh, I, it's interesting as, as we're you know, going through that, that story to watch him try to, it's like, how do I do this? How do I reconcile you know, the, 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 the one thing that, that meant more to him than anything else, which was Cortana, as she begins to fade you know, from him literally and figuratively, how does he deal with that? He was never used to um, failure. Failure was not an option for Master Chief, and yet the most important thing in his life is literally failing in front of him. 
and uh, I, I thought that was interesting. I love to sort of delving into that. that I have a question. Can you guys hear us? Well, we can't. Okay. Right, yeah, right, we right. can't really hear ourselves. Yeah, we can't hear ourselves. So but that's we're, good we're really too. glad that you've heard all this. <laughs> But see that uh, once again is a perfect segue to something I want to ask Jen. Um, when you look at uh, having to transform Cortana the way you did from an ally and a partner uh, to a uh, you know a megalomaniac antagonist, um, how, how did you? Uh, yeah, kind of. We have a monitor. Just kick on. We can hear ourselves. Um, yeah, I guess. How did you approach that? Uh, looking, thinking back on it now. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on that transition. You know, Cortana, I think, Cortana in Halo 5 is trying to do good. So she, nobody who is, you know, Hall, and I imagine Halsey wouldn't think she was a bad person either. She wouldn't think, so it didn't, it just shifted a tiny bit for me, her, her power, of course, the amount of power that she had, so the relationship and the way that she was going about trying to do something shifted. But other than that, I didn't, I, I very clearly, when I'm playing an evil character, let's say, or somebody who's doing bad, I don't, you can't think of it that way. Sure. That's not how, you know, because nobody who is thinks of themselves that way. They're doing something because they're trying to make things better for themselves, or for their friend, or for the world. So that's, it just shifted the way it means. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, what have each of your characters taught you about maybe yourselves or about life um, after after all this time? Uh, you know, oh, there's so many things we come yeah. rushing in. Yeah, I think, uh... Yeah, she's a bird. Collect. You know, I, I don't know. It, 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 it's so hard to answer that question for me. Um, you know, I feel like I, I, I know this guy pretty well. Uh, there's still parts of him that are mystery to me. Uh, I have a lot of admiration for the character, uh, for the, the way he develops his personality. I think one of the things I've learned is sometimes you can say you can say a lot more with a lot less, and I should probably learn that lesson. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I should learn that. You don't have to say a lot to get his message across. So Note to self: you, know? you can do a little bit of that too. Uh, Jen, just for you, um, are there any after uh, your time uh, with Cortana and, and continue, continuing? Are there any examples of AI in the current world? As AI becomes more and more uh, of a conversation, you see more applications of it uh, all around us. Are there, is there a certain way you think about AI, uh, given all the time you've, you've spent playing Cortana? I assume AIs are going to make my job obsolete. <clears throat> I mean, frankly, yeah. you know, because somebody, weirdly, somebody asked me this on the plane coming here. Um, and also because my voice, because of the Cortana app that Microsoft has said, you know, and the, your operating system, um, my voice is everywhere. And so they have it, they can make me say whatever. So there's a part of me that fears that I will get, I will lose my job. Oh yeah. Like, and the, the application, it's actually all the text already built. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I can see. So if you hear a tape of me saying something really awful and incriminating, I probably didn't do it. They can make me say anything. Um, but what did you? What was, I, I guess if, if you think about, like, for example, if some, if, if, if just imagine there was some app that, like, with AI could make you look really old, and the entire world started mm -hmm. using it. Do you? Um, <laughs> huh. Just imagine. Um, yeah, I guess when you see different uses of AI, cloud AI, are there certain things where you scratch your head a bit because you you kind of have had to think in terms of uh, 
you know, in, in these ways for, for so long? No. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's great. Yeah. I would be nervous that I would see everything in this terrible No, I don't know. You know, I think the, the interesting thing, and this is a, uh, the example of how, of how fast technology is moving, is that the concept of, of uh, an AI like Cortana is almost approaching being quaint as compared to where this thing is really going. And, and uh, I'm watching a show right now on HBO called uh, Years and Years, which is a fascinating show on a lot of different levels, I highly recommend it. But uh, the, the, the latest episode was really dealt into this whole deep fake, um, you know, likeness where, where they can create. And it's happening. This isn't in the future. This is happening right now where you can create, you know, somebody that looks exactly like Jim Taylor and, and have her say things that you Right. And how uh, kind of scary that, that thought is. How much can we trust what we see? How exactly? How much can we trust what we see? Cortana is an obvious AI in the, in the Halo world. What if she wasn't so obvious? Uh, uh, you know, it's, it, uh, you know we're, we, are, we are leaping headstrong into a brave new world that uh, it's exciting, but it's also fun. Uh, I want to get into some, no, some fun stuff. Um, <laughs> have you guys ever played uh, Halo multiplayer 1v1? Have we played it and have we won? <laughs> no, that's cool. <laughs> I won. I won. Yeah, have, have both of you played against each other? No! no we I think we should figure out a way to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Did they do the thing where they put the arms between your arms? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. yeah. Oh my god, that's what we should do. Yeah. We should. We need to be the ones yeah. to be Steve. There you go. That's a great idea. Yeah. 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 Anyway, long story short, an 11 year old girl won the right to play me in Halo. She, we started playing, the professional was behind the curtain. Uh -huh. Even with the pro, the girl cleaned our clock in about 15 seconds, and I kid you not. By the way, I found out not too long ago, and this happened back in Halo 2, so this was years later. She went on to become a professional. I wish I knew her name. She did. Oh, oh, and was a pro for several years. I think she's out of it now. But, uh, okay. Well, then you got to at least feel good about the loss. Yeah, I'm just owned by someone who built a career. But I'm telling you, you have never been more humiliated than have an 11 year old girl look at you like. <laughs> what did you really? Did you, yeah, what did you do to pull the guy aside? There's, there's supposed to be the program behind you. What are you doing? Yeah, I was like, you kidding me? I think I, I quickly adopted a WC Fields persona. <laughs> Get away, they're on your body, man. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Is there a, um, a, an actor that if uh, you had your pick, that you secretly wish might be cast 
for uh, a Halo role, just so that you could work with them on the Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. She's in this year's and years program. I thought you were going to say this year's Halo. Yes. <laughs> She's in. Emma oh, oh, Thompson is in Halo Infinite. Yeah. Spread Halo that around. She's in years. Uh, she's she's a, a star in the HBO show. I love her. I love her. I love her. Uh, well, I don't know. Somebody I would love to. Uh, Who would you geek out over? Uh, somebody. Uh, well, you geeked out over Keith David. I geek, but he's in there. Yeah. He's in there. I'm trying to think of somebody that, uh, that, that was not in there. Uh, De Niro comes to mind. That would be intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if he was, you know, I mean, I, I think I'd be too freaked out to, <laughs> to be able to do it. <laughs> That'll be amazing. So hopefully, if someone's taking notes, Emma Thompson and De Niro are <laughs> two. Yeah. Um, are there any other characters, um, or maybe even franchises, uh, films, should say, where you thought, man, it'd be so fun to voice that character or be part of that universe or something like that? Yeah, I want to be the Simpsons. Oh, that'd be awesome. I want to be the Simpsons. You want to be what? I want to be the Simpsons. Oh. Um, no. I want to be something random on the Simpsons, like a dog. I want to be the dog that's just barking all the time. Right. Or a monkey or something. I can't really, uh... There are a lot of monkeys on the Simpsons. <laughs> I don't know, I was just thinking about it as I said that. Dog, you have this. Are there dog. monkeys? Trip to the zoo. You know, I get to voice master freaking chief. <laughs> <laughs> so many scenes, which ones jump out after all these years as some of your favorite, maybe to record at the time, but or maybe just to kind of stick out as memories? My favorite line is, welcome home, John. Uh, we were supposed to take care of each other. <laughs> what's my, what's you my were, line? You were supposed to say I was supposed to take care of oh, you, yeah. and I said we were supposed to take care of each other. <laughs> That's real life. <laughs> That's how it actually goes down. Uh, other ones? Okay. I mean, most of the things you say are just Cortana. Yeah. <laughs> Cortana. 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 Okay, it looks easy. I know. <laughs> it's not that easy. Don't make a girl a promise if you know you can't keep her. Keep it. Keep her. <laughs> We're gonna keep her. Uh, and there's always the. I need a weapon. I need a weapon. Yeah. So before we get into um, uh, a few questions from the audience. I happened to bring along, I thought we could do, we didn't do this in Orlando, but maybe we could do just a few more lines. What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we'll start, we'll, we'll start with that top one if you guys want to want to give it a go. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy this. Too. This thing is falling apart. We're not going to make it. Pull up, pull up! You did that on purpose, didn't you? Or top. <laughs> Oh, wow, here's one. What do you think? Can someone do another one? Yeah. Uh -huh. Final target neutralized. Let's get out of here. Let's find a ride into the cabin. No, that'll take too long. I've got a better idea. Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> There's a teleportation grid that runs throughout Halo. That's how the monitor moves about so quickly. I learned how to tap into the grid when I was in the control room. Unfortunately, each note requires a rather consequential expenditure of energy. Oh. <laughs> Something tells me I'm not gonna like this. But I think I can take the needed energy from your suit. Needless to say, I think we should try this only once. Cortana. 